So hi, my name is Rudy and uh, we're here at the lovely LXJS uh, 2014 in Lisbon and I am joined now by Ari Osmani who is, uh, remind me your title again, Senior Engineer. I'm a Senior Engineer working with the Chrome team. At the working moment. with the Chrome team. So. Um, Part of the Google family. Um, recently joined the Google family, isn't it? Or is it? Um, it's not so I, recent anymore. Not so recent. I joined two and a half years ago. Yeah, so it's been on a while. Sorry, uh, so I read your blog, <laughs> but you're not updating it as much as you used to. Not so, as much. Uh, I'm a little busy with engineering these days. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that's a good excuse. So, uh, <laughs> so Addy, um, you're, you've released a number of things over the last couple of years. Um, famous for a number of things, but just recently you've done the uh, web starter kit. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? What sure, was the rationale? Sure. Um, so the idea with the Web Starter Kit is that people these days are, are generally trying to build apps and sites that they want to work really, really well everywhere. Um, and when you've got like you've got users and customers increasingly using their phones and their tablets as their primary device, you just need to make sure that those apps and those, those like pages look fantastic everywhere. It's not good enough for them to just look great on, on desktop and perform well on desktop. Because you've got a number of different constraints on mobile you have to think about. So the idea with Web Starter Kit is that you download this pack and you get a high performance starting point just from the get-go. Um, we give you like default layout that will adapt and it's responsive, it'll look great everywhere. Um, it's got a lot of tooling baked in as well. So one of the things that is sometimes a little challenging to do when you're building a multi-screen experience is doing things like testing across devices. Mm -hmm. So one thing it helps you do is um, you can just you can spin up a server um, and get an address. And you can you can go to that address on any one of your devices, and you can like synchronize your testing. So if you're navigating around your pages, you're clicking, you're filling in forms, you're scrolling, it'll synchronize those those interactions across all of your pages. Um, it also gives you like a build process, so you can easily optimize um, your pages very easily. So keep those images down, um, keep your scripts and styles uh, nicely concatenated and squashed up. But the idea is just to help people deliver faster experiences for the web. Great. And uh, you've moved away, so um, I, I haven't played with it as much as uh, I should have uh, in interviewing you prior. But um, you've moved away a lot from a, quite a prescriptive, I mean, Yeoman, you had a, quite a kind of idea around, um, you know, frameworks and, and process and workflow and stuff. And this is more liberal in its, in its approach, right? And so, um, for example, it, it looks bootstrappy, but isn't bootstrap. And um, it, was that a deliberate attempt by you guys to kind of just kind of go right down to the, um, you know, bare level and kind of let people build it up themselves? Yeah, or? I, think, I think one of the things we did well with Yemen was we, we reached into the population of developers who are already building apps, and they, they sort of know roughly what they want in their stack. Yeah. Um, with Web Starter Kit, we want to hit sort of the other 90% of developers that don't really know what they should be using. They don't really know that much about build tooling. Um, they want to be able to use best practices, but they don't perhaps know where they should be looking for that yep. stuff. And so we want to start off with like a single base where you can easily say, go download this. Um, it'll take you like a few seconds, and you can just go start right away building cool. something that's, that's hopefully fast from the get-go. Um, the idea is that it, it involves minimal effort, um, whereas Yaman requires a little bit more. You have to start thinking about you know what frameworks you're using and so forth. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, you've you've built in a number of things into um, into the website kit, including um, the Gulp kind of um, uh, build system. And uh, as part of that, you got Page Insight. So um, it, yeah. it touches on another part of your your job at Google, which is uh, the Chrome Developer Tools program. And uh, do you want to talk us through what's new in that world, what's upcoming, uh, sure, what people can sure, look forward to? Of course. To? Um, so on the Chrome DevTools side of things, um, in a similar vein to, to mobile. So the Chrome team's all about mobile this year. We're, we're seeing increasing growth in that area. Um, and so some of the newer features that we that have been worked on uh, include a, an ability to sort of simulate devices a little bit more closely. We've got a new responsive mode that lets you basically easily debug what your sites look like. Um, we've got a network throttling mode, so um, you can simulate slow connections, so like 3G and, and slower than that, um, without having to go and use other apps. Um, sometimes it's a little tricky to find these things when you're, you know, when you're developing cross-platform. Uh, you might find something that works great on Mac, but not necessarily on Windows. So that's already been baked in um, to the dev tools. People can go check it out in the latest Canary builds. Yep. Um, some of the other work that's been going in has been um, around trying to improve things like the, the performance um, tooling that's in, in the dev tools just to make sure it's, it's easy for you to profile things that um, are on perhaps other devices, uh, again, in the same vein as, as mobile. Yeah. And uh, what about things like, uh, you know, uh, plugging into, um, without, without trying to promote one or the other, things like Source Labs and, and stuff like that? Have you got any ideas about being able to plug in uh, Selenium WebDriver type stuff into the Web Starter Kit to allow you to... Uh, is it kind of promote, or is that something that you know people have to kind of figure out on their own? So we we actually discussed um, whether or not it was worth doing something like that as as part of our first version. 
Um, we've decided to explore it maybe in, in a future version. Um, yeah. It involves a little bit more thought because um, a lot of the, the really great um, cloud testing services these days are somewhat, you know, you, you, you have to buy an account, you have to, yeah. you know, continue with a subscription in order to use them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but we want to make it um, as frictionless as possible for people to get access cool. to that stuff. So um, we're probably going to have to um, spend a little bit more time researching that area before we go and prescribe something. But it's, it's definitely something that's on our radar. And uh, so Google I.O. is just kind of in progress, just finishing? I can't work it's, out. It's just it's finishing. Just finishing, moment, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, what, what about it excited you? What kind of things coming out of there um, as a Google employee kind of really really got you um, going? So there's two things. Um, we, uh, we've we been doing a lot of work over the last year on Polymer, which is sort of our, our library that um, adds a lot on top of web components. It helps you get um, some nice sugary syntactic details like uh, two-way data binding. Um, and we've been doing a lot of work on that. We released um, a new set of Polymer elements um, to go along with that. Uh, we've also um, released uh, a new vision called Material Design. Um, and the, the idea with Material Design, and this is sort of a, a concept that's both um, applicable to Android and Chrome, um, is that we want to be able to help developers deliver um, experiences that look great across multiple devices. Um, we wanna, like, if you have a really rich animated experience that looks fantastic on desktop, um, we want to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to move those over to tablet and phone and still keep up a really nice sweet spot for uh, performance as well. Yeah. So um, we, we announced that um, you know, we were investing in that vision um, and uh, we released sort of a developer preview of both a spec around material design but also a number of Polymer elements to help you sort of get started with it. Cool. Um, it's still very much early days. Uh, we welcome developer feedback on it but um, I'm excited to see that, you know, where that stuff goes. And the new de design language coming out of Google is, um, a, 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 we've kind of been told about it, but we don't know much about it. Have, have, you, uh, have you seen a little bit of that? And do you know yeah, yeah, I have. I, I actually really love it. Some of, some of what it's doing is, um, is quite ambitious in, in a good way. Yeah. Um, some of the transitions that, um, that it sort of prescribes really take uh, sort of being able to move from one view and another in, in, in an application beyond what people are currently doing on the web. Yeah. Um, and I, w I would love to see um, a few more examples that enables of where, you know, you're not really able to tell the difference between whether something is built using native technologies or the web. Yep. Um, and I think that what we want to enable is developers to be able to have a choice, right? If we are able to hit like really high performance on both of those platforms, it's really up to you to decide, you know, what makes more sense for you? What are you comfortable building in? Great. And finally, um, um, I mean, within the web world, within Google, there's definitely been, um, a, you know, a, a fair bit of fragmentation over the years for a number of good reasons. I think, you know, from Angular to yourselves and various other things. Um, with the uh, consolidation of the design language in Google, is there, um, within the engineering team, is there a similar practice to kind of start bringing those technologies together in a more concise kind of almost like a, the Google framework, for want of a better word, is, 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 is um, I or, or do you see them as value in their own independent streams? Um, I think there's, I think it's both of them. Um, there's value in their own independent streams, but we're also trying to um, bring a level of consistency in, in what we deliver. Um, so uh, in terms of like um, Polymer, for example, uh, the Polymer team have been um, working with the material design team um, for, for quite a long time, actively giving feedback, actively being like the, um, the first class version of that on the web. And so, you know, with teams like that working very closely together, we've got like engineering and design closely knit. Um, I think we are going to see like a, a little bit more consolidation um, of efforts. Uh, we're also seeing on, on in areas like um, with Angular, I think that they're they're going to be investing a little bit more um, in in web components, perhaps in the future as well. But um, I'm I'm excited in our direction with Palmer and with uh, with material design as well. Great. Um, we're getting a bit of abuse from the background, hecklers. Um, <laughs> so uh, finally, uh, you enjoying the conference? Because um, yeah, the weather's yeah, great. We both we both Londoners, yeah. and this is uh, this is definitely well, a, a better I mean, experience. It's, it's, it's a nice experience being in the middle of the jungle. Um, yeah, and certainly very different to any other conference I've been to. Good. Uh, did you, is this your first LXS? This is my first LXS. Yes, yes. Great. And uh, coming back? Yes, definitely. I will, I will hopefully be back next year. Awesome. So um, that's it from my perspective. Um, thank you very much for your time, Maddie. You. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Catch up soon. Cheers.